All right, welcome back to the channel. So today, what I wanted to discuss was something a little bit different and more of a kind of a freestyle of what I'm thinking right now about Performance Max. Um, so the title of this video is gonna be just a theory on Performance Max and kind of a working theory at that. Uh, so I just have 10 uh, different kind of items that I wanna talk about and what I think about with uh, Google Ads and Performance Max right now. Um, right now, I would say of, let's see, I oversee about 23 accounts right now, uh, but most of those are done for you and some consulting stuff. And Performance Max is overall doing a pretty good job. I do think since it's released last year, uh, the beta released technically in last fall, every month it's gotten considerably better. Um, and I think the more data it has, the better overall that account will be, um, and the campaign will be, I should say. So let's kind of go through it and hopefully I can get my ideas across to you and hopefully this helps you in some sort of way. So the very first thing, it's still in beta. Google won't say this, but I do think, especially since I've seen documents talk, and from talking to Google reps and advanced growth team reps, that you know they're saying there's about 50 to 100 more features coming out this year, still, so in Q3 and, and then Q4 for Performance Max campaigns. So I do think like they released the product a little bit too early, and I do think they kind of just put it on the public and they're trying to get as much interest as possible and kind of create the product and finish the product as the overall public kind of keeps using the product and, and i think that i think they're still using it in beta and i can't you know i can't confirm that because they do say it's not in beta anymore the official beta was last year however just looking at the product and kind of seeing every month the new features that come out kind of more insights now and different uh, data that we didn't have a month or two ago like it's still definitely a product that they're still creating and i think they released it a little bit too early but Google is never going to go back and say, oh, this product was never, like, you know, not officially ready for public release. Um, I did hear a couple of other Google Ads managers and Google Ads agencies talking about, they heard through the grapevine that smart shopping may one day come back. And I don't think that would ever happen just due to the fact of like what that would say of Google and what that would put them in the position of like, hey, we released a product that is not ready for public use. And people have spent millions of dollars on this you know, campaign that maybe not be ready for public use. Um, and that would just kind of tarnish, I think, what Google's trying to achieve by releasing new campaign types and stuff like that. So I don't think it, they're ever gonna go back on you know, their worry about smart shopping or potentially say like this product isn't ready, but just kind of being in it month after month or almost a year now, like it's still early release and probably another year or so until maybe all those features, you know, 50 to 100 more features in Google Ads for this one campaign are officially here and maybe at that point it'd be a better use case. Um, however, I, I still think, you know, the beta overall of this, you know, campaign site is very solid. Month over month it gets better. And I think most people who are using it are generally happy with it. I think it's more so either the agencies or the very large accounts that are, or excuse me, the very smaller accounts that are potentially struggling with this campaign. Uh, and the second point, more is better. Um, I think, the general perception of this overall kind of campaign type is it's a very easy campaign to create and it's kind of a one size fits all. And I think that's how they pushed it in the marketing and they still push it for the small businesses or the people who have not really familiar with this campaign or a Google account strategy as a whole. But the more I use it and the more clients that have adapted to this and the more kind of spend I have, I believe the more detail, the more granular you get with either the assets you give Google aka the creatives or the ad copy or the different goals you give Google, the better that campaign slash account then performs. Um, the more ironed out your asset groups are, giving it Google more ammunition to then use in, you know, across all those six to seven channels of Google, depending on what Pmax campaign you have, the better it usually performs. Now that could just be a bias of then the, you know, the more data you give Google, the longer it runs that it performs better. So I don't have an exact, you know, data comparison there. So it could be, you know, just me uh, you know, not looking at it correctly. But I do think the more information you give Google in terms of asset groups, audience signals, and then into that more like a breakdown from products and collections to different ad copy, different creatives, the better chance you have of performing. Um, now, again, if you're spending 100K a month or more and you have just a lot of ads to throw at it, throw at the wall and see what sticks, then create more campaigns after that. Um, but if you're starting a lower spend, say like 100 bucks a day for just Pmax, I do think you want to give it a good amount of different asset groups to, to kind of target and not just like one kind of asset group and let it hopefully run for you. Because at the end of the day, you are giving Google, you know, 
different creatives and different stuff it can use for going on, say, those six or seven channels that it has to go on. So it's not just, oh, I have, you know, search copy, it's going to only appear in search. No, it's going to go on every single channel that it can or that it believes it can find a relevant audience that would convert for your products or services. So that's the second thing. Third thing is not a, not a simple campaign. And this kind of just piggybacks off the second one in saying, you know, more is better. The simplicity of the campaign is not at all. I think, again, this kind of goes to the messaging of what Google wants to say for this campaign set. Um, it just, it's not. It has to go across the six, seven channels. It has to test all those varying audiences and varying potential users across your products and then still try to remarket to them if they're interested and stuff like that. Um, and that kind of goes into another point that I want to talk about is that you really need to have more campaigns than just Pmax and accounts. So that kind of goes into point number four is you you need sub campaigns. Now, this Google has even said, especially in their, I think the most recent Academy for uh, Pmax campaigns, like their advanced Academy, that if you're trying to go more into discovery, display and YouTube kind of campaigns, more of that creative driven campaign, you need to have those campaign types still on their own. They're not really sent for search and shopping. Um, I think they're kind of trying to get those all into this Pmax campaign, but if you're trying to either add some remarketing or try testing more outbound creatives and get those audiences, relevant audiences, interested in your product, Google does recommend you need those supplementary campaigns to help overall with Pmax. And I, I believe that is the correct way of looking at it, um, especially on the remarketing side. Like remarketing is, is not nearly as effective through Pmax as it was at Smart Shopping. Um, it's not not the same kind of strategy that a campaign goes through. So definitely, if you don't have any other you know display, discover YouTube campaigns make sure you at least have one of those set up as a remarketing campaign, preferably dynamic remarketing if you're not in a policy uh, that would restrict you as such. Um, so that's the fourth thing. Fifth thing is testing is needed. Again, this kind of just goes along with everything else that if you're giving Google say 100 bucks a day or a thousand bucks a day, whatever kind of budget you have, you need to give Google an ample amount of time to test. Google officially recommends four to six weeks um, I've seen some faster adaptions if you've migrated the a, a campaign or created a new campaign off of the smart shopping that was successful. Um, but if you're a brand new account or brand new into that kind of fully automated realm, you know, not aside from certain stuff, um, I do think it's going to take a little longer. And potentially you could kind of fast track that by adding secondary conversion actions like add to carts and checkouts, stuff like that. It gets very complicated and can get a little confusing with duplication in, the, in, in, in hindsight if you are not familiar with that strategy. Um, however, I would recommend you know give it at least five to six weeks of creating it, let it run, and then after that five to six weeks, then start testing. Because the first two of those four to six weeks that Google recommends, the first two is just a new campaign journal and Google doesn't even take any of that data. Then the next four or two to four at that point would then be testing what Google has found out. And then now you have a full six weeks uh, cycle of testing data. Um, and the next steps after that would be either eval evaluating the profit of the, you know, the efficiency of the campaign, or if you're ready to scale, um, like those are the two directions you can go into. Um, and Solutions 8 has a great, um, great breakdown on that as well. So if you look at Solutions 8 PMAX, they have a great breakdown PDF of like, hey, this is what happened, do this, do this, do this. Um, so give them a look. Now, the next thing is budget require. I always say 100 bucks is like the minimum you want to go. Um, if you have, say, you know, five or six main collections and you only have a couple hundred bucks to spend, you could maybe test out all five or six, like 50 bucks a day. However, I've seen best results and still have people I've talked to with at least $100 a day and in your budget. Um, that just kind of goes back to what I just talked about testing. Just Google needs that budget to have ample amount of room to test different audiences, different channels across those four to six weeks. So if you test with a lower budget, just probably think it's going to take a little bit longer to actually fully test that campaign and what Google will thank it back for you. So that's what I recommend for that. Next is your next is URL expansion. I am a big fan of URL expansion. I do think you need to take the necessary precautions and exclude like non-commercial intent pages like policy pages, stuff like that, maybe contact us pages. However, after that, it's up to kind of Google and you as a test to kind of give how much room you want to give to Google. If you have a really good SEO and kind of content blog strategy, keep your blog pages in there. Maybe if you have good CTAs and good engagement on those pages, maybe it's a good thing to test. Um, I've seen good results in the past having blog pages in there. I've also, seen, I've also had clients get very bad results leaving blog pages in there. So it's really up to Google and seeing what 
uh, content they just funnel traffic to. Um, but just take a look at that content and see if it can be good for you. And if you not, if not, you can always either restrict more pages as exclude, or at the end of the day, you can always say no, only send to these pages. Um, a good test that I'm interested in running, which I'll be running soon, is for if you have really good like sales funnels or lead like infographic pages, um, you can test sending traffic to only those pages, and maybe you have like five to ten different funnels. Test that and see how it performs versus product pages or versus homepage collection pages, stuff like that. So good test idea there. Um, and then creativity with assets. Now I do think a lot of people kind of just when they start a new asset group, they kind of just put in general brand creatives or brand assets, which is fine. Like that's it, you know the first thing you always want to do to kind of get it going. However, I do think the sheer amount of like creativity you can have by segmenting asset groups with different collections, different products, different SKUs, um, categories of your products, or even audiences of the, who you're trying to target is pretty much infinite. I know you only can have 100 asset groups per campaign. However, you can be very, very creative by having very good, very tailored ad copy, very tailored offers. And then also with that uh, assets that match those audiences or collections of products that you're trying to target. Um, I do think that's like the next step forward after you scale up to about a couple hundred bucks a day, maybe just focusing more on brand or maybe one or two collections, start adding more creatives and assets that um, are match who you're trying to target or what you're trying to target. Just another layer of details that Google then can use for you when it's testing or trying to scale on that current channel that's going after. So just a heads up for that one. And then two more is one, uh, new customer acquisition strategy. Um, this one I think is still a little new in terms of what the true potential can be. Um, I've not had really good success testing just the new customer only strategy. I've seen okay success testing the new customer value based strategy that we had with smart shopping. Um, however, hopefully in the near future, maybe once the campaign is a little more ironed out in Q3, Q4, and you make sure you have your first party data in there, all good to go, selling every day through Zapier. Um, Maybe that new customer only strategy will work better, and I hope it does, because that's gonna be a huge tool if it actually performs correctly. However, Google did just announce on the Academy about two weeks ago, I think in the beginning of August 2022, that they recommend if you're using new customer only bidding strategies to layer um, two, two exact campaigns. One, just a normal both new and existing customers, and then also another campaign, the exact same campaign, nothing changed to the bidding strategy for new customers only. Um, I thought that was a good information on what Google wants us to do with that, and I'm not testing that yet. I'm trying to test that probably next month for some clients. Um, but again, interesting thing to note, and they want you to duplicate that campaign to allow it to have good success for that. So as a heads up for that. And then finally, uh, if you're not sure about Pmax, test the waters. So an easy way to test if you think Pmax will work for you is just running some simple dynamic search ad campaigns only. Um, so if you do a create search campaign, no standard keyword targeting, just dynamic search ads, and just see what Google either thinks of your website and what the match and what the search queries match to your website. Uh, that will give you a pretty good idea if Google has indexed your site properly, knows the site content and site structure. Um, if not, you can also do some simple Google tests like the rich results data test, uh, mobile friendly test, or even the um, kind of the SEO overall, like the website speed test, which I think is called something else now. Um, but those are three tests you can run in, in going with also like a DSA campaign, just getting real time data feedback of what Google thinks of your, uh, you know, overall website. If it's not good, like if either you're not spending at all or just the searches are not relevant or no conversions, then possibly you need to look more into your site itself before you do, do PMX. Um, or you can test Pmax like a shopping only campaign, no creatives, nothing like that either, and asset group. So that's a, another topic for another day. However, these are just 10 things I wanted to kind of discuss. Um, just again, working theory. It can be very opinionated and maybe not exactly what maybe has you've you know seen work for you or your clients. Um, if you've had either something to add or you know rebuttal against, please put in the comments. I, I, Pmax is still such a new campaign type. I think no one really has ironed out best practices, just kind of stuff that's worked for them or stuff they've heard work for others. So thank you again for watching this video. Have a great day. Thank you.